I know all the easy answers. We've had tons of people through our workshops, and the first thing they say is golf. Golf, 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 golf. Men and women, golf. After about three months, they're throwing the golf clubs out. The next thing is see the grandchildren. And if you pay attention, in another three months, there's a for sale sign up on the grandchildren's house, and they're moving to parts unknown. They've seen enough of grandma and grandpa. Uh, and then I think, you know, we see travel, see travel a lot. Uh, those are the easy answers, but none of those things actually make uh, retirement. We've seen estimates that about 40% of the boomers or higher are actually going to suffer depression. Uh, we think a lot of that is related to this loss of status that sometimes occurs as you pass through the, the veil of retirement. It's a huge change. We have a term uh, that we use, PIP, previously important person. Um, especially guys that have been guys and guys and gals that have been successful in business. Um, they got paid attention to um, their calls got returned and from one day to the next their calls don't get returned as often. Most people um, say that they want to do some sort of work and when people said they wanted to work it was about maintaining that relevant and meaningful uh, a place in life. Um, most of us my age have been defined by what it was that we did uh, and it's, uh, it's hard to walk away from all those things without having thought deeply about what you're going to do next to fill up um, some of the needs that are getting met uh, by your work life. A successful retirement is different for every person but the common element of all the successful retirements I've seen are that people are actively driving the bus themselves. Successful retirements start with active planning. I know I can't say this enough. Um, people that are retiring today from the boomer cohort have participated in one of the longest secular positive economic trends in history. And as a result of that, and David Foote has talked about this extensively, life has come, opportunities have come, responsibility has come, wealth has come. And we haven't oftentimes had to work as hard at it. I don't think that condition or those conditions are going to exist in retirement, which makes it even more important that you, the boomer, take control of his own destiny and begin to make a plan. There are three kinds of activities that you need to blend into a plan. You got to have your pleasant activities, your leisure activities, your golf and your travel. They're based on your interests. That's why we feel it's so essential to remember what those interests are uh, that you've built up over your life. Uh, the next part we say are engaging activities. So you've got pleasant activities and then you've got engaging activities. Engaging activities are things that build on your strengths, that are based on your strengths. If you were a good gardener, you should be engaged uh, working that gardening gene. If you're a good manager, uh, good with people, you should figure out a way in your life to still be involved with people or to still help people manage something um, because you've spent a lifetime building that strength and you ought to exercise that strength. We call those engaged activities. And then the third kind of activity we talk about having is a meaningful activity. And this is where you do something where you give back to something greater than yourself. You sort of move out of the realm of doing it only for yourself. And so again, it's imperative that we sit down, we do, you know, look at ourselves, be honest with ourselves about what our strengths and interests and values are, and then think about those kinds of activities that would make us happy in our retirement.